in charge of teaching guys a little bit about smartphones and how they are related to viral reality. So basically, everyone has a cell phone nowadays. Very rarely do you come across someone who doesn't have one. And most of these are going to be smartphones where they have a data package where they can go online, um, use apps, um, anything like that. So what started before all of this was actually flash mobs. Uh, the first flash mob was created in Manhattan in May of 2003 by Bill Wasik. He was the senior editor of Harper's Magazine. And the first attempt to add a flash mob was actually unsuccessful. After the targeted retail store was tipped off about the plan, um, they ended up calling the media, telling them what was going to happen, and it was just a huge fail. So they didn't actually go through with it and um, do it. The second flash mob attempt was June of 2003 at a Macy's department store. There were 130 people there, and it was synchronized clapping or applause for about 15 seconds. Wasik claimed that he created the flash mob as a social experiment um, designed to poke fun at hipsters. Um, so basically, he was trying to highlight the cultural atmosphere of conformity and wanting to be part of the next big thing. So it was the same guy who did both of those flash mobs? Yep, same guy. Drew to the party. What was his name? Bill Wasik. And um, June of 2003. And the first mob again was? The first mob was, um, the unsuccessful one was in May of 2003. So the second one was just a month after. Um, so the reason that um, Bill Wasik created the flash mob was to highlight um, the cultural atmosphere and how everyone's trying to conform and come up with the next big thing um, and try and poke fun at that. But instead it actually backfired on him because he created this whole new revolution um, and gave a vehicle to the idea of flash mobbing. Um, the first example I'm going to show of this is AT&T came out with a 4G flash mob commercial when it was switching back in the late um, first decade of the 2000s. Uh, this is kind of when flash mob videos were starting to go viral on YouTube. Possibilities, AT and T. Okay, so that was kind of the first um, time whenever companies started catching on to the idea. Uh, you know, all of a sudden it was not only something that just like hipsters and the like you know trend starters were doing, but companies were taking off with this as well. Um, soon, everyone tried uh, starting these social experiments um, on their own. Some were very organized. Um, you know, they had a set group of people. They say, "Okay, we're going to meet here. We're going to wear this type of clothing, and um, we're going to do this." Others were more secretive. They would just put out something on um, social media, so like Facebook or MySpace, and say, "Hey, download this MP3. Be at this place. Wear this thing. And exactly at this time, you're going to hit play, and it'll tell you what you're going to do as you go." So here's an example of one of the MP3 formats. This was in New York City. Engage. instructions and we'll all have a pleasant time together. Tonight is the annual Celebration of Lights Festival and our councils have arranged for a meeting of the tribes in the neutral zone. But first, we must do some activities on our own to prepare for this very important diplomatic ceremony. In a minute, we're all going to try and take one big jump at the same time. One, two, Three, jump.
Great job, everybody. In the Northern Tribe, a slow dance is done in a very unique way. When the music plays, so. Oh, and then um, others simply had pre-planned choreography, and uh, they would quickly show up at a certain time. And this is more the traditional flash mob that we would um, see, you know, talked about. Let's drop! You know that. Yeah. 
You've been together a long time? Yeah, almost three years. Okay. You know what, officer? Yeah. You have a great evening. Thank you. Okay, you're really going to be okay. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. Uh, let me know when you can rest. Stand yeah, right, correct. Here we go. Here we go. You can take it from here. Thank you. So you did say that you love each other? <laughs> yes. Do you feel like it's an everlasting love? An everlasting love. to online video shows. Tosh.0 um, features clips that people film day to day on the go. Um, it's not with high quality cameras, but with their smartphones and iPods. Uh, this show started in 2009 and is hosted by comedian Daniel Tosh. Um, it's completely viral video driven. Um, and Tosh adds his own jokes and comments to move on to the next segment. Um, but otherwise, it is completely um, driven by stuff taken by people's phones. Um, you know, iPods, all that stuff, just on the go. Ridiculousness is an MTV television series that started in August 2011. And it basically shows clips of um, people getting injured during the process of trying to show off for the camera. It's produced by Jeff Tremaine and is a Tosh.0 copycat. Most of these videos, again, are caught by smartphones and um, are posted to um, the web and have become viral videos. Um, this is a clip of... Warning, MTV and the producers insist that no one submit any videos of themselves or others performing any dangerous activity. We will not open or view them. At any point, have you ever done anything inside that's an outdoor activity? In your life? Probably not. What one? The kids play basketball in the house. Okay. The house. Okay. 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 Well, I was thinking the zip line is kind of something we usually do outside with the side That's a giant warehouse. Though. <laughs> <laughs> they I like you had a bike inside. Anyway, 